Good morning. We are extremely pleased that you are here. It is good to come together for the purpose of co-creating. Do you agree? You are knowing what you are wanting for the most part. You are enjoying how that evolves. The entire universe is established in order to assist you out here on the leading edge of focusing your desire. How are you doing with that? Do you enjoy the desire when it is manifest? Do you enjoy the desire even before it is manifest? This is the crucial question. Is your desire life-giving without manifestation? Say yes. <laughs> you, we, you, we all are eternal beings and desire will continue to evolve. We will be eternally amending our desires. It is the way everything is established. You cannot hold your desires back. They just happen. Preferences are being born. I prefer that to that. I prefer that to that. I see all of these possibilities and this is my choice. I really prefer this. I prefer comfort to discomfort. I prefer joy to sadness. I prefer motion forward to a feeling of stagnation. Or I prefer a little ease to frenzy. I prefer more money to not enough money. Or I prefer more action to not enough action. But I prefer calmer action rather than frazzled action. But I prefer action to boredom. In other words, you are constantly in every moment at all kinds of levels of your being, even cellular levels, speaking preference. And source energy hears every preference at its subtle or broad definition and responds to it immediately. The question is, how much in alignment are you with your preference? If you have been banging around in a situation that is causing you to very clearly state your preference, you want more money or you want a different physical condition, you want to be well rather than sick or you want to have prosperity rather than debt, as that preference shoots from you, if you are feeling so much the discomfort of your sickness or of your debt or of your dilemma, then you are not in that moment a match to your own desire. So even though you have stated it clearly, vibrationally, maybe even with your words, if you are not a vibrational match to what you're asking for, you cannot let it in. And if you're not letting it in, then you're not living it. And if you're not living it, it isn't because you don't want it. It isn't because you haven't preferred it. It isn't because law of attraction isn't working well. It isn't because you are being put into a category of inappropriate or unworthy and therefore you are being deprived of it. It is for only one reason. You're not a match to what you want. Don't you love knowing that whatever you prefer, source energy responds? Sometimes our physical human friends have a hard time accepting that. Sometimes when we say, when you ask it is given, we can feel you feeling something like, well, it would be all right if I get what I'm asking for, but some people are asking for some things that I just assume they don't get. What that says is, in order for me to be joyful, in order for me to be satisfied, in order for me to have life the way I want it to be, I need to apply some measure of control to what others are getting. And we say, if you can let go of that one, then you will be in the place of living your life in the way that you've intended. If you will see this environment as a buffet with all possibilities, and you will allow all, including yourself, to choose whatever they are choosing, and you don't get involved in what they are choosing, you will more likely be in alignment with who you really are. It's an interesting thing. When you get together, even in your groups where you feel some sense of compatibility, very often, right in the middle of that compatible group, you have arguments. 
You say, oh, well, we really come together when we push against our common enemy. And we say, yes, but you have enemies even within your group. And if you could get to the place where you no longer feel a need to push against anything that you disagree with, you would become in alignment with what you do agree with. That's really big. Do you hear that? Do you know that it is your pushing against those things you don't agree with that causes you to be out of alignment with what you do agree with? Even within your own body, there might not even be anybody else involved with it. Let's say you want to be slender and you don't feel that you are. You feel fat. You are discouraged and unhappy about your body. And you make statements of desire, I want to be slender or I want to be healthy, I want to be different than I am, but oh, I do not like the way that I am. It's wrong for me to be this way. I feel guilty when I eat, or I feel lazy when I don't exercise, or I feel embarrassed when I'm seen by others, or I feel unhappy with where I stand. And we say, you're pushing against what you do not want is causing you to not be in alignment with what you do want. It's your awareness of what is that is causing you to offer your most dominant vibration relative to this subject. That's a big word, dominant. What am I dominantly vibrating relative to the subjects that matter most to me? When you take the common subjects like your body or your relationship or relationships or your financial situation, you can tell with just a little bit of feeling what your dominant vibration is relative to those subjects. Of course, you can tell even without feeling because whatever it is is what's manifesting. That's always a match. But if you're wanting to know in terms of vibration where your dominant vibration is, all you have to do is start paying attention to the way you feel. For example, when you think about dollars, does the subject of dollars or financial well-being, does it feel to you like eagerness, like anticipation, like adventure, like fun? Or does the subject of dollars feel like worry or frustration or struggle? You know. You can tell right away where your leaning is. And while you may do some of both, you can tell which you do the most. You know. Every one of you knows where you fall in that subject. When you think about your body, do you feel vital and alive? Or do you feel a little worried? You know. You can tell when you see the commercial on television what it activates within you. You know. When you think about your primary relationship, that one where you are intertwined most intimately, does it feel life-giving or life-draining? You know. Through time and through your association with your life experiences, you have developed patterns of vibration, some of which are serving you enormously well, and some of which are flat out not a match to what you want. If what you desire and what you dominantly offer vibrationally relative to that subject don't match, then your desire cannot come to fruition. But something even more important than that, you don't feel good on your way to its fruition. We would like you to come to the place where you recognize that there is more coming for you all of the time and that every desire is constantly amended. And we would like you to know that so well that you can stand right here, right in this place of unfulfilled desires and feel wonderful about the unfulfilled desires because you know this will be the common, everlasting, eternal place where you will stand because there will always be unfulfilled desires. It's time to get over being upset about what isn't happening and to begin being exhilarated about what is happening or about the potential of that which is to come. As you lament what has not happened, you offer a vibration that won't let it happen because you can't match what you want and what you don't want at the same time. So if you feel fat and that is your dominant vibration, it doesn't matter what you do. It can't change because vibrationally you are not allowing yourself to be where you want to be. So do you have to think about being slender in order to be slender? Do you have to think about being prosperous before you are prosperous? No. 
But you can't feel bad about not being prosperous and you can't feel bad about not being slender. In other words, you cannot be in the resistant mode. You've got to be in a mode of feeling good in order to allow that which you consider to be good to come to you. So when we talk about your dominant vibration, we are not talking about holding yourself tenaciously upon thoughts and not allowing yourself to ever think toward a certain thought in a certain way. What we are suggesting is that you just begin to relax and lighten up and be more free and easy about more things and trust that the things that you have identified preferences about are known by all that is, are being organized in terms of circumstances and events. And if you will just chill out and lighten up and get into a place of no longer resisting, those things will come to you. It's a matter of deactivating the vibration that you don't want. Now that's tricky. We said that to you in a way that you would understand it. We also said it to you in a way that does not work. And here's what we mean. You cannot deactivate a thought. You say, all right, I feel fat and I want to be slender. So I have to deactivate the feeling fat. Problem with that is every time you think about being fat, you activate it. Every time you think about no longer smoking, you activate it. Every time you think about anything, you activate it. The way you activate is by giving your attention to it. So the way you deactivate is not give your attention to it. But when you decide you're not going to give your attention to something, you're usually giving your attention to that thing you're not going to give your attention to. <laughs> and now you've activated it. And so the key to getting what you want is by activating thoughts that feel good when you focus upon them. So this business of solving problems has never worked for you because you activate the problem during your solving process. In the moment that you know your problem, you also feel a preference being born. And as soon as you can turn your attention toward the preference, you are in alignment with it. But Art of Allowing does not say to you that you have to turn your attention only to that specific preference. Art of Allowing says you can think about anything that feels good and you are in the place of allowing all things that you consider to be good. Can you feel how much easier this is? We tease about how you can move through your contrast, activate a desire, then just pet your cat. And if it pleases you to pet your cat as much as it pleases your cat for you to pet your cat, now you're in the place of alignment or of allowing. We want to show you how to get into the place of activating vibrations that allow well-being to flow to you. And we want to introduce to you a process that you may have used many times under other titles. Today we are going to call it virtual reality because we want you to begin to use this process called virtual reality for one purpose and one purpose only. It's not to remind the universe that you've been asking for it and it's time that it shows up. It's not a workshop where you mold things into place. Virtual reality process is the process where you practice the activation of a vibration that allows. Most of you are not consciously aware of how or when you picked up your vibrations that don't allow. Most of you were very little when you began having some of those feelings and most of those feelings felt normal in the environment in which you were living because those around you were feeling them and expressing them to you and teaching them to you. So little by little by little by little, you have developed the vibration relative to these subjects that you are currently walking around with. And it's going to take some practice to move those vibrations into different places. And that's what this process of virtual reality will do. It will cause you to practice a good feeling vibration so that first, the good feeling vibration begins to feel more normal to you. And second, the good feeling vibration puts you in the place of allowing. And third, you will be more likely to recognize the not so good feeling vibrations if you've been practicing the good feeling vibrations. So it's a powerful tool. Virtual reality is for one purpose only, and that is for you to practice a vibration that feels good and make it your dominant vibration.
The virtual reality process is a process whereby you find something that feels good and you practice it until it becomes your most normal dominant vibration.